and you really trust your memory. More to the point, how much do you really need to trust your memory? Check this out. Some groundbreaking studies made towards the end of the 20th century have indicated that memory is malleable by nature and in a constant state of change. Initially, the understanding was that once a memory had passed through the temporary archives, our original record of that event would be preserved as a permanent physical imprint in the neocortex, the outer part of the brain. Imagine a family photo album collecting dust in the attic. The thinking was that memories were like photos in that album. Each time we decided to bring it down and reminisce, the photos would look the same, if a little faded. However, reconsolidation theory, which resulted from a neuroscience study conducted in 2000, suggested that the very act of recalling a memory renders it unstable, and that this instability means that memories can be updated automatically to accommodate new information. So, rather than flicking through an old photo album, the act of recollection appears to be more like retrieving image files from a computer hard drive, editing them in Photoshop, and then saving them over the originals. As frightening as this might seem at first, this discovery could be wonderful news for people with mental health issues such as anxiety, phobias, and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Because it means that rather than just coping with the stress triggered by reminders of past trauma, those traumatic imprints themselves could be available for a rewrite. However, memory reconsolidation needn't only benefit those affected by serious upheaval. We don't have to be standing in the middle of a road looking at an oncoming bus to experience fear. Human beings can learn to be afraid of pretty much anything. If reconsolidation theory holds true, then we should be able to unlearn our necessary fears by reconsolidating some useful and positive information into our formative memories. This is what happens in therapy, of course, but also when we have transformative conversations with friends, when we forge positive new relationships, even when we read a moving book or watch an incredible movie. The interesting question for me is this. How might we live our lives differently if we allowed ourselves to embrace this completely rather than clinging to our personal narratives as if they're concrete? I'd love to hear your thoughts.